designandmake.com. Here are five handy power tips that'll help you with your next project. Not only save you time, but make it much more fun to work with your 3D content. Now my first tip is going to show you how to make this layout. And really what we're trying to do is recreate the assembled layout that comes with the hack of the week number 211. But I want to show you how to do this in a way that it makes it easy to add in new elements if you want to. So right now this, this particular layout is all on one level. And all of these different components have been merged together. And they all have, with the exception of the plank, have a base height of the thickness of the plank, which is 0.23. So if we look at this particular component, you'll see that it has a base height of 0.23. And that's so that we can get it to rise up above the plank that we have there. Now that's great, except for if we do want to go in and add in a new piece of clip art, let's say the garden gnome, then right away you see that he merges in with that plank. And I need to remember what the base height is or what the thickness is of this plank is so I can add it to my gnome to get it in place. Well, there's a much better way of doing this. So let me show you that in a different file. Now on this layer, you'll notice that we have two different levels. We have level one, which has all of our extra components on it. And then on level two, we have our plank arrow. Now what makes this so special is that when I look at these individual components, you'll see that I've removed the base height from it. And I've added that base height into a level property. So if I select this level and go up to my change properties, and you'll see that although this says component properties, it's actually referring to my level one, and that's where I put my base height. So now anything that I add to this particular level will automatically start out with this base height. So if I bring in my gnome back onto level one, right away you'll see that he's sitting proud of the plank sign because he has that base height already added to him of that level. And now I can simply go ahead and move him in to where he needs to be to finish off my layout. And I don't need to worry about trying to remember what the base height was for this particular level. And there we go. He's in there perfectly. For my next tip, I'm gonna show you something that happens to me quite often. First of all, we're gonna take a look at some models here in our architectural elements collection. And this happens to be our ceiling medallions and rosette model project. If I wanna use these two models right here, I'm gonna select them one at a time and bring them into my 3D view. So I'll double click on the center one, and then I'll double click on the center plug. Now, if I want to go back now and reselect my center one, cause I want to size it up, the only way I can do that is go to my modeling tab and select it from there. But sometimes that's not really all that convenient. So what I suggest most people do, and I do this all the time, is to go ahead and off select everything so there's nothing that's selected. And then I can right click anywheres and whatever components are underneath my mouse pointer where I right click get listed right here. So now what I can do is I can select my center one, let's click it again, hold down my shift key and I can size it up and I can create my layout like I'd want. I know a lot of people shy away from doing 3D cutting on their CNC machine because they think it takes too long to cut. And that, that can be true. It does take a little bit more time than doing the 2D stuff, but we can also use some techniques to help minimize the amount of tooling time or cutting time it takes to actually cut some 3D content. And this is one of those great tips. A lot of our 3D assembled layouts have a huge blank areas and they're there for a reason. They're there so that you can go ahead and customize these to fit your needs. Well, you can use these to your advantage and help to cut down some of your machining time if you think through your tooling before you start cutting them. So let me demonstrate this with this particular layout. This is the assembled layout from Hack the Week number 210. It's a great assembled layout. It has some nice flat area here for you to add some of your custom V carving if you'd like to, and also a nice banner here that you can add some stuff onto if you want to. The regular technique for machining something like this would be to do a 3D roughing pass, a 3D finishing pass, and then do your V carving and then your profile cut. But there's no need to do a 3D roughing pass and a 3D finishing pass on all of this blank area. You can just do that with an end mill straight up. So let me show you how to do that. 
So the first thing we're going to do is tile our views and we're going to go to our drawing tab. Now we need to isolate these areas with some vectors. I could go in by hand and draw them if I wanted to, but I'm going to use our bitmap trace tool to do that with. So if I select this bitmap representation of my assembled layout and I go ahead and click on trace bitmap, I can choose this second dark gray color and you'll see that it turns these areas pink. And those are the areas that it's going to trace when I click preview and then apply. And that's exactly what I wanted it to do. I didn't go ahead and mess around with these settings at all. You might want to to see if you can get a better result, but I'm very happy with this. So I'm going to click close. Now these are all grouped up. So I'm going to right click on those in a second and ungroup those back onto the original objects layer. Now I'm going to hold down my shift key and I'm going to deselect all the vectors that I want to keep. Those are the three that I want to keep. And then I'm going to press delete on my keyboard and get rid of the rest. Now I have the vectors that I need to hog out these areas with a big end mill, but I still need one more vector to do the rest of my 3D roughing and 3D finishing. And that's an outline or a profile vector around the outside of this large component. So if I select that, go to my modeling tab and choose create a vector boundary around selected component. I'll get that vector that I need. So I have these vectors and that's all I need to actually cut this with. So let's bring out our tool paths and we'll re tile our views just to correct what we saw a minute ago where my 3D view was cut off. And now let's start out by hogging out these areas here with a nice big end mill. I don't want to select my bitmap or my 3D content, so I'm going to deselect that to make sure I only have my vectors selected. And then I'm going to go ahead and choose a pocket tool path. Now, I need to know how far I want to pocket down. And if I hover my mouse over top of my 3D layout, you'll see at the bottom here where my mouse is right now, there'll be a number and it's minus 0.3. 796. And so what I would like to do is I want my first cut or my finishing cut to be at that depth. So we'll go ahead and change that. We're going to use our end mill. They notice I don't put a, I didn't put a negative there because it's asking me for my cut depth and that's a positive number. I'm going to use an end mill for that. It's going to take four passes. I'm going to use my offset tooling, which is great. And I am going to make sure that I overcut that just a little bit. And that little bit comes from the diameter of the ball nose end mill I'm going to use to do my finishing pass, my finishing 3D pass, okay? And that's going to be a 1 8 inch ball nose end mill. So I'm going to put half of that diameter in here, which is going to be 0 0.0625. And that way I'll overcut just to the center of the cusp that'll be left behind by my ball nose. And I'm going to go ahead now and just like calculate and we'll preview that visible tool path. Doesn't look like much right now, but that's probably saved me tons of time already. So let's close that down and let's do our regular old 3D roughing toolpath, except for I'm gonna go ahead and keep those internal vectors selected. We'll start off by doing our roughing pass. And I'm gonna use my quarter inch end mill for that. I'm gonna machine my selected vectors and I'm gonna overcut that or my boundary offset is gonna be 0.25 of an inch. I'm gonna leave a a little bit of material behind so I come back with my finishing pass and I can cut that off. And then we're going to go ahead and we're going to calculate that. We'll preview that visible tool path. And that's what we have. That's what I expected to see. So let's close this down and let's now do our 3D finishing pass. We're going to use that 1 8 inch ball nose that I mentioned a minute ago to you, those same vectors, but we're going to overshoot that a half of the end mill that we're gonna use, okay? That way I can make sure that I get out into some of this flat area here so that I'm not worried about um, having any sharp edges and anything left behind. So that's the perfect amount to do that with. So it's half a quarter, um, quarter inch end mill. Raster is fine and we'll go ahead and we'll calculate that. Then we'll preview those visible tool paths. And when it's all done, you'll see that it's nice and clean. There's no raised lip in the middle. Everything looks really good. And now I can go ahead now and develop my profile cut for this. Uh, obviously before that, I'd wanna add any V carving in I'd like to do before that, but that looks really great. And that is gonna save me a lot of time when it comes to cutting these. I'm sure you've had this happen before where you go ahead and you cut a project, but then you go back and you look at it and you go, boys, I wish I had have used a smaller cutter for parts of it so I could get some more detail. Well, let me show you how you can go ahead and 
fix that if you need to in the end after you've already made your initial two cuts. So let's look at this assembly. And this assembly comes from the Wildlife Expansion Pack number two. It's a lovely assembly with some nice mountains and this Canada goose in the center. So what I did originally was I went ahead and I made some a roughing tool pass and a 3D finishing tool pass. So let's go ahead and preview those. And you'll see that there's the roughing pass. Looks like what I expected that happened. And that's the way it cut in my machine. And then we're gonna go back and we're gonna do this very long 3D finishing pass. This is quite a big project. But you can see right away as this is slowly showing you my preview that if I had been paying attention originally, I would have seen that there's not a whole lot of detail in the goose's face or in his feathers. So let's pretend that I've gone and cut this, looking at the finished piece of my machine and I go, this all happens before I take the part off by the way, but it's still sitting on the machine where it should be and I think to myself, maybe I should go in and see if I can cut this again with a much smaller ball nose end mill. Well. This first finishing pass was done with a quarter inch ball nose end mill. Now, if I had to go through and do this all again with a one eighth inch ball nose end mill, it would take a very long time and it would waste a lot of time because I don't need a whole lot of extra detail in the trees, in the background, in the water. Really all I want the detail in is the goose. So how can I do that? Well, I could go in in my 2D view and I could trace around this goose if I wanted to and that would be great. That would work perfectly, but it would take a lot of time. So seeing as we get all of the 3D content that was used to create this assembled layout, we can just go ahead and bring in the Canada Goose and get a vector outline from that. So let's double click on that goose. Let's size him up about the same size as what the goose is in that assembled layout. It can be a little bit bigger if you want it to be. And then let's just go over to our modeling tab and we're going to create a vector outline from that particular component. And then we're going to go ahead and delete that component out of there. Now that we have this vector outline, we can zoom in a bit and now we can size it to fit over top of that goose in our layout that we have. And just by messing around a little bit with your sizing here, you can get it to fit pretty close. And really we just want it to be over top of the actual goose and we can zoom in a little bit and we can nudge that into place. That looks great right where it is. Maybe we want to make it just a little bit smaller. And then we can put it where it belongs now. And that looks great. So let's go with that. And we are going to close down our finishing tool path that we had started before. And let's create a brand new 3D finishing tool path. We are going to use a 1 8 inch ball nose end mill instead. So we'll select that. We are going to use the selected vector, which is the vector we just made from that component and size it appropriately. We're going to do no boundary offset at all. And then we are going to go ahead and calculate that. Now in the 3D view, if we zoom in nice and close, especially around his feathers and his head, if we preview that visible tool path, you'll see that it cleans up really quite nicely and we get that detail back in the goose's eye and his feathers. And that looks like a much better job. Now, speaking of that as a way to optimize your tooling, certainly you could go over this whole thing with the quarter inch ball nose end mill and see what the results were on your machine. And then you could go in and just clean it up with this one vector to clean up that goose. That'd be a great way to save yourselves a whole lot of time. And even then see visually on your CNC whether or not you're happy with the amount of detail that you're gonna get in the goose with that quarter inch ball nose end mill. But this is a great way to, like I said, if you cut the part, you realize that you should have gone in and got some more detail that you can go in and do that really easily by using the existing clip art that comes along with your projects to get your outlines from. Now for this last tip, we're going to cover something that I hear about quite often is that people will cut a 3D component or a 3D layout and go to add their V carving to it and it doesn't show up, although they can see the tool path. So let me show you what that looks like. And typically this is what I see when people ask that question. So they have their three tool paths set up. They've got a roughing tool path, a finishing tool path and a V carve tool path. So let's look at those. We're gonna go ahead and preview our tooling. Let's start with our 3D roughing pass. We'll preview that visible tool path. That looks perfect. It's exactly what I expected to see, nothing wrong there. Let's go ahead and do our finishing pass. Let's preview that visible tool path. Cleans up very nicely. Everything looks great, no problem at all. 
And then when it comes to looking at our v-carving toolpath, if we take a look at that, you'll see that there is a toolpath created, but when we go to preview that visible toolpath, nothing shows up. Now, it's one little oversight that a lot of people miss out on. So let's take a look at that toolpath a little closer. So this is a standard v-carve toolpath. We're telling it we're gonna start at zero and we wanna go down to a flat depth of 0.1 inches deep. We're using a V-bit, a 60 degree V-bit, which is pretty standard. Everything else is normal, except for right here at the bottom where it says project toolpath onto 3D model. Right now, what you're doing is you're telling the software to machine this at the top of your material block. So if I turn on my material block and I turn this on its edge, you'll see that it's gonna be cutting way up here and it's gonna miss all of those surfaces. And there's really no way to tell it to drop the C down this far, drop the O down this far and angle it a certain amount. But what we can do is something even simpler. We can just tell it to project that toolpath onto that 3D surface. So I recalculate that. I wanna get an error. That's because this font has some problems with it, but we're gonna continue with it anyway and see if it gives us the result we're looking for. So let's do that. And let's preview that visible toolpath. And now you'll see it shows up because the software is projecting that toolpath right onto that 3D model in those surfaces. That could be the surface of those tiles or it could be the surface of the cup. It doesn't matter what it is. It will project it right onto that surface for you and it will look perfect in the end. I know those five tips went by super fast. But that's the great thing about these videos is that you can rewind them and rewatch them as many times as you want. Now, this video is going to accompany a live question and answer that I'll be hosting over on the Design and Make It Instagram feed on April the 29th at 3 p.m. UK time. If you have any questions, bring them along with you or you can post them below and I'll bring them along with me. Now, if you happen to be watching this video after that live event, that's okay too. If you have any questions or comments, put them below and I'll answer them as soon as I can. Now, if you like these sort of things, please give this video a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed yet to our YouTube channel, please do. And what we'd like you to do most importantly is have some fun, keep making, and during these times, be safe and keep yourselves healthy. From all of us at Vectric, thank you for watching.